Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. It's Dom with My Three Fords. And what you're looking at here is one of the recent upgrades to the Bronco, which is the k and cold air intake that was installed not too long ago. And then I backed that up with this, which was the Flowmaster Flow FX axle back system. So this is the one that it said generated the most horsepower. It also happened to be the cheapest. So between the two of these things, I spent less than $800, didn't touch the computer, and, well, actually, should be an asterisk next to that comment. I'll get into that later, though. But before, you know, I wanted to throw this on. I needed to do some testing first, and I didn't take it to a dyno. Basically, I just did several, you know, probably four or five runs, zero to 60. And here's how those runs turned out. As you can see, there were two, 0 to 60 and 8.2, 1 and 8.0. And keep in mind, this is a bad lands. So it's 4,700 pounds. And it does have the 4.7 gear ratio because it is a seven speed manual, as you can see there. So uh, my launches were, you know, Sometimes good, sometimes bad. I would say that's one good thing about an automatic is you can probably consistently launch thing about the same each time where a manual requires a little more skill. But anyway, so those were the results of the zero to 60 time. Now I'll go ahead and get into what was required to have it, you know, taken care of. Okay, folks, so I'm not gonna video this whole thing. It's There's other installation videos online that you can check out, but this is the stock box right here. And based on all of this equipment right here from k and it looks like it's pretty involved. The directions, I think, say 90 minutes. And here are the directions. So, I've watched the video, we'll follow along the directions too, but I might stop and kind of go over things as I go if I find something that's interesting. But So it says, increase of 11 horsepower plus 10 pound-feet of torque. These are definitely at the higher range. And I have a Flowmaster exhaust, as mentioned before, that I will be installing too. And you saw the data before. So this should be kind of interesting. But it's quite a bit of stuff there that's going to be taken out and then you know put back in sort of. So quite a few steps, 20, 30 steps. Oh, that's fun. You know, 30, 41 steps. Oh, 41 steps. Hmm. How exciting. Anyways. That's our last shot of the stock intake, and we'll start working on that now. So I said I wasn't going to do a video on this, and I'm basically not, but I just wanted to let you know that this is sort of the tough point, and that is that you're taking apart this section, you're going to replace it, and there's a... Um, I don't know, binder, hose clamp, whatever you want to call it right there. There's also one over here, and that's where the screwdriver is. It's going in there. The problem is you only need, need a big enough screwdriver to get on the hose clamp screw, but it's small enough to fit that length in there, but long enough to get past all this stuff so you can actually turn it. So I was able to do that. This is actually now loose, but you basically got to do it all by feel. And I think this is the last thing I do before I put everything back together is to take off this unit right here. So I just wanted to throw that in there. This is the most difficult part, I believe. And I was able to get it, so it wasn't wasn't terrible, but just so, just so you know, uh, Ford did not make it easy for you to remove this uh, unit. So anyway. 
just a couple picks of the stock unit and the process. Two things I want to point out is you can hear the huge rush of air going into the system now that it's much more streamlined than it was compared to the stock and even with a stock blow off valve you can hear it dump the air and make its huge sound every time you let off the throttle it's as if I have an aftermarket blow off valve so I did have a check engine light go off and I did have AutoZone verify that it was the EVAP line and I've contacted KN and they sent me two extras that were already basically plastic welded. So on the one that I had, I had actually used this JB weld, plastic weld stuff. So it worked pretty good. I just had to have AutoZone clear the code for me and it hasn't come back on. It's only been a day or two, but anyways, just thought I would throw that in that you may have to get this. I installed it fine. It worked for about six days, but then that little piece popped off and that's why I got the check engine light, just like uh, the one gentleman in one of the other videos had the same thing happen. So uh, hopefully k and is sending these out in their kits now where they're already like sort of plastic welded on there and then probably won't be any issues at all. Hey folks, so here's a quick rundown of the exhaust system and its installation, which is super simple. So you basically just untighten this bolt, comes off, and then this is the new part, that's the old pipe, okay? Then you can take off from up somewhere around there was where the other hanger was for this side on the stock part. And then over here, you can see where the old hanger is here. Actually, let me get up in there. So the old hanger is under this, so the new hanger goes right over that, and they give you the bolts for it. So you don't actually take off the old hanger. And then this does go up here. So there's a lot of rust there, so maybe they could tidy up their operation with a better rust-protected uh, bracket. But that's the new bracket right there. And then they come with these little red hangers right there and right there. Oh, where am I? Yeah, right there. Okay, much closer than I thought. I hate working under the vehicle. So, anyways, you can see how easy it is. It's basically that simple. Getting so, you might be asking yourself why I chose k and and why I chose Flowmaster. Well, simple, those two products I'm very familiar with uh, from back in my Mustang days back in the mid 90s. So it's been a while since I've had a really fun vehicle, which is probably why I like the Bronco so much. And, but I've always been familiar with those products. Always thought the Flowmaster sounded super great. Uh, I've been very familiar with k and all this. So the first time I had a cold air intake and I was surprised at the performance of the cold air intake. The amount of air rushing in when you're throttling up and the amount of air that's dumped out of the stock blow off valve clearly makes a very pronounced sound as if there's like a you know aftermarket you know blow off valve that that's supposed to make the sound the blow off sound you know, blow off valves make you know it's very pronounced you could definitely hear it go Psss. and it's almost to the point where i wonder if i should upgrade the you know injectors because i think the injectors are you know, not forcing enough fuel in there to, to capture all that air and to uh, mix with it or whatever. But anyway, and then the uh, the issue with the muffler, I was kind of concerned because, you know, my experiences with V8s, you know, two chambers, H-pipe, you know, equal length headers, and, um, you know, really great sounding cars. And I was really concerned it was going to sound like a fart muffler, you know, and uh, off of a Honda Civic. And, you know, if you like Honda Civics, that's all cool and everything. But I didn't want my Bronco sounding like a Honda Civic with a fart muffler. So I was 
pleased and really relieved that it sounded as cool as it sounds uh, at idle and even throttling up it sounds really good it doesn't drone on either anyway um so these are the times that i ended up having so you can see there's a 6.9 7.3 a 7.5 those were kind of crummy launches and stuff and the conditions were about the same i did it in the same location that i had done the first uh, three or five tests and I took the best three out of, out of the couple tests that I did. And so I think I had a full tank the second time, but, uh, as opposed to a third tank, but I, it was also about maybe 10 degrees cooler. So, so you can, I think those are basically, you know, uh, canceling out each other or, or something pretty close to it, I would think. But, um, but I, I was impressed with that that gain of around a second or even a little bit more. So again, I didn't do any launching in anything but regular two-wheel drive mode without the traction lock or without the traction control system. So I turned that off. It was in two-wheel drive and I didn't do any special modes because I don't have sport mode. So I don't think it would matter anyway, but you know, I don't have sport mode, so I can't launch it in sport mode. So it was basically just, you know, my whatever skill I had with a stick shift and, and, you know, launching it. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of drag racing with the Bronco, don't get me wrong, but it is nice to have a little extra power when you need it to get onto the freeway to get out and pass to do those kind of things. It is very punchy at low RPM. I do think it has a little more higher RPM on for now. Um, you know, so when you're on the highway, you can, you, you, you can get things done a little bit quicker. And I always believed that it was kind of torquey at the, at the lower end without any issues, or at least I've noticed that anyways, I think. Uh, but again, that part of that could be the four seven ratio too. So anyways, I think I've covered everything I can. If you like this video, hit the like button for me. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos about the Bronco or my other two Fords, you can hit the subscribe button on one of these upper corners. I can't remember which one it is. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.